political action regarding moving public comments to the top of the agenda. Great. Councilman Lutz? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know, not so long ago I, I sat uh, over there, that side, um, right there in that front seat, many, many a meeting. And there'd be many of my other residents and people who are concerned about many issues which are on the agenda. And some of the agendas, as all you must admit, were quite lengthy. And people have lives. People have family obligations, work obligations, things. And the way that things have been going is that people couldn't comment until the agenda item was called. You know, we start at 6.30, 7, 7.30, 8, 8.30. Sometimes it went past 8.30. People had already left, and it doesn't give them a meaningful opportunity to be heard. So the way I see it now is you, you as a council, allow public comment after or as each item is called. I don't think that's the right way to be open, transparent, and to give our citizens, our residents, the ability to be heard. I've done a survey of many other communities near and uh, not so far, and it seems that each and every one of them do public comment at the beginning of the meeting. You do your invocation, you do your flag, a couple general statements, and then the public's heard. A lot of people don't understand that they're always welcome to contact the council people before the meeting to be heard if you can't make it in person. But I think it's a best opportunity to be open, as we all have pledged to be, to let people be heard at the beginning of the meeting. Let their two cents or a dollar, whatever it may be, be heard, and then they can go about their business with their lives and their family if they cannot stay. But I don't understand why we have to push them all the way down to the back of, of sometimes lengthy meetings. And sometimes, as a, as a person who had something on the agenda, it's the luck of the draw. You end up seeing where it is on the agenda, and Madam Clerk posts it well in advance. Everybody knows. And you're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm C, I'm D. It's like the NBA draft lottery. You find out where you are, and you just cringe. So um, I, I just think when I've looked at El Portal, I've looked at North Miami Beach, I've looked at Hollywood, I've looked at Miami Gardens, it, it appears we're the only ones who do it this way, and I just don't think it's right. Therefore, I'm proposing that we move it to a place that best ac accommodates our residents. Great. Uh, thank you. That was a motion? That's my motion to do that. Um, I'll second up the discussion. Okay. I'm just, um, that's what Councilman Mills. The, so let me understand. So we're going to have at the beginning of the meeting an overall public comment section, but not with each individual item. Yes, Mr. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely correct. All right. So you looked at that, and I'm sure our new court can attest that's how they do it in Hallandale Beach as well. Um, I think that, that that works much better because then we could hear before we actually address the item, right. the concerns of the residents and those who may not be able to stay until their item is called. That was my thinking. All right. So, yes, I'll, I'll second that motion. Um, further council comment? Oh. I think um, I, I also concur that I think it would be a great thing. Um, I would just like to make sure that we give people an ample opportunity to speak. There, I know right now we have a you know, specific time limit, and if they, you know, I'd like to make sure that we have some way of dealing with it, they want to speak on multiple issues that are coming before the council that evening. Um, I have a question for the clerk. Um, is, uh, is, have we always done it in this fashion, or have we in the past had council comment at the top of the agenda? How has that worked in the past? Years ago, we had council comment. Not, not council comment, comment. Public, public comment, comment. yeah. yeah. Public comment as well. okay. um, at the end of the meeting. And then um, the, and, and when we had public comment, it was more when we were required to have public comment. At the case of the uh, ordinances, public hearings that were on different items. Um, and then the state legislature intervened and said, you have to give the public an opportunity to speak before a council vote is taken. It doesn't even have to be at the same meeting. So, for instance, if we know that in the future something's going to come up for a vote and residents want to address the council two meetings prior to a vote, as long as we give them that opportunity. Um, and then uh, and I know just a couple years ago, we moved the public comment to the beginning of the meeting um, for that reason. And then two years ago, we moved it to after every Council, um, 
items are always for last because that's usually when um, you have more discussion. Okay. So. Great. Any more council comment on this? All right, then we'll open it up for public comment. No, I think I want to begin to see here. Uh, Cresto, you know, this is one of the most deceptively anti-democratic measures that's been promoted recently, and I'm going to tell you why. And, and I think all of you here need to understand this. You have a public meeting, and it's not an inconvenience to you whether or not the people who you represent have an opportunity to speak to you. That should never be perceived as an inconvenience to the flow of the meeting. What's really important is to have an informed, knowledgeable discussion of the items at hand. If you all propose a, a resolution or an ordinance, and in the course of the discussion that you have prior to public comment, you reveal and discuss information which was not known to the people in the public because you didn't provide any written backup material to support the information that you talk about or anything else. And a person sitting here in the audience on hearing your discussion says, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right to me. I think this, that's what public comment is really about. It's the ability to be able to speak to you in an informed, intelligent way and not to come in at the beginning of the meeting or after you voted at the end of the meeting, but rather to be able to have, and I know you don't like this, you don't want to, you don't want to acknowledge the question and answer flow, but if you don't have the opportunity, and the people in this, in this room and the people in this village don't have an opportunity to sit there and discuss with you information that maybe you don't have, as well as information that they only learned about because of your discussion, and again, it's a discussion that can only be held in the sunshine, you do a great disservice to the entire notion of public participation in a public meeting. I would strongly urge you not to pass this. How inconvenient is this? It's not like you people put in a whole lot of time. You come twice a month to a meeting. You know, we come in here, it's an inconvenience to us too. But if you feel strongly enough about it, we come. And that's a joint connection here. Don't trash this. Don't do this. Don't, don't say, everybody come speak now and then walk out the door. And when they go home, the next day they find out, you know what happened? They said this and they said that. And Thank I you. wasn't there. Thank you, Mr. Crespo. Pay attention to this. Um, and I, I, I think I don't want to speak for Councilman Meltz, but I want to clarify. I don't think he was saying it was inconvenient for us. I think he was saying it was inconvenient for the public. You may have to wait two hours to speak on an item. So you're, you're absolutely correct. So I'll stay for 20 hours if I need to, and I know my fellow council people will agree. It's no inconvenience to us. We're talking about people, single parents, people who are working, people who have two jobs, people who make an extreme effort to come here and don't have three or four hours to just sit there. Uh, yes? I'd like permission to make an important distinction. Two years ago, um, when I came onto council, I asked the clerk if it would be possible to post the agenda with all of the entire packet online ahead of time. And you've had, from that time, two years ago, until this day, everything in front of you that the council has in front of them. So the public was enabled at that time to get all the background material. And there have been times that I have sat out there and yearned for that information. But once the public has that information, they have a good deal of understanding of what the item is. They have as much of an understanding of, of what the item is as we do sitting up here. And often over the last two years, I referred to the fact that they, these, this was available online. Now, people do get lost in that, and they, they don't click at the top of the agenda and get the sometimes upwards of 60 pages of material. 
but they can if they want to. And usually, if they're interested in the item, they will, if properly pushed, I mean, you know, that they, that they are capable of doing that. And I think that makes a big difference in a, um, a public comment at the beginning of the meeting, because I think there's a level of knowledge and understanding on the part of the speaker. Uh, and I, I do feel uh, that over the last two years that the flow of the meeting has been affected. Now, whether that's necessarily bad for the public, I, I really don't know. I, I didn't think it was that way before, and I, I really would like to pass this so that we can try it this way, with people knowing ahead of time that that is their chance to speak. Smart. Great. Yep. I also make a comment that you know many other jurisdictions. I know Mr. Meltz did some research, and we have our new clerk. You know, they require you to sign up before the meeting to speak, and if you don't sign up, you don't even get your opportunity to speak. It's the same way at the county. So we've never required that, and I agree. I mean, things here have changed over the last couple of years from when they didn't even give you the backup ahead of time. You go online, it's all there. I agree that it's better at the beginning of the meeting because then we can hear as opposed to having someone speak after and reacting. Maybe it'll change my mind. So I'm in favor of this. Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor, mm -hmm. comments? No, I think uh, my main concern I would, uh, would be that we make sure that you know, along with doing something like this, that we ourselves, you know, discuss ways of um, having, you know, more opportunities for open, you know, frank discussion with the public outside of the necessarily administrative meeting that, that this represents. Um, and, and I think that's something that everybody here has talked about that we're interested in doing. I think we, we should pursue that. Great. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Just to clarify that this.